Van Winkle is second place, went off the six to four favorite. And it looks like he's going to be committed pretty early here by Johnny Murta. He goes past Malibu Bay. Ganati is just holding Lord Shanika in a bit. They're going second and third now, followed by Beacon Lodge. Paco Boy is behind these as they race down the home straight with two and a half furlongs left to travel. Rip Van Winkle by two lengths. Ganati coming under pressure in second. Then Lord Shanika. Paco Boy still going well towards the outside. The Maroon Jacket. Richard Hughes about to deliver a challenge, but Rip Van Winkle has got a very good break on them now. It's three lengths. Paco Boy is giving chase as they run down towards the final furlong. Rip Van Winkle from Paco Boy. Donati beaten off back in third. It's Rip Van Winkle who's holding on from Paco Boy. And it's going to be another Sussex Stakes for O'Brien and Murta. And Rip Van Winkle wins in terrific style. In second, Paco Boy. Donati has her colours lowered in third. Forgotten Voice and Lord Shanakil fighting it out for fourth. And Campusing turns towards the home straight with a big lead now. It must be eight or ten lengths to Rip Van Winkle in second place. Beethoven on his outside, followed by Premio Loco. Camford Cliffs, who has a, a tremendous turn of foot, back in fifth place, followed by Dream Eater and Mac Lover. The tail inside the final three is all about to unfold in the 2010 Sussex Stakes. Rip Van Winkle now getting much closer to Encompassing. Then Beethoven, Premio Loco, Richard Hughes still sitting pretty quietly on Camford Cliffs will deliver his run out wide. Ryan Moore kicks for home on Rip Van Winkle. Camford Cliffs picking up quickly now. Then Beethoven, Rip Van Winkle by two lengths. Can Camford Cliffs reel him in inside the final half furlong? Rip Van Winkle trying hard. Sussex Stakes on Canford Cliffs runs down last year's winner Rip Van Winkle, Premio Loco in third, Beethoven and Dream Eater. Very much Don Quealy in command of things at the moment with Canford Cliffs just allowing the leader no more than two lengths start. Tom takes a quick look and he'll see that Canford Cliffs is right on his tail. Rio de la Plata in third and Raj the man in fourth. So Frankel at the halfway stage in the Kipco Sussex Stakes on the descent, still leading by a length and a half. Tom Queeley still sitting quietly. Canford Cliff stalking his rival, then Rio de la Plata and Raj the man. And Frankel is still travelling comfortably and is yet to be asked on the front end. Canford Cliff shadowing his rival, trying to decide when, if he can exert any pressure. And Frankel still travels strongly. Canford Cliff's the orange colours. And now Frankel, for the first time, is shaken up. Canford Cliff's in second place, over a far long out. Frankel's acceleration is instant. Can Canford Cliff's, who's drifting left, reel in his rival? No. No, a decisive no. Frankel, unbeaten, utilizes that turn of foot to devastating effect and wins the kick no Sussex Stakes. What a brilliant horse. Frankel saw off Canford Cliffs in the twinkling of an eye. Rio de la Plata and Ragsaman, third and fourth. What a race, what a horse. As they went their way round this lower bend into the straight bullet train, just increasing the ante. Frankel still doing it easily in second place far in third and Gabriel just niggled along last of the quartet so running downhill bullet train with Frankel exuberant on the descent Bahar in third place just a couple of lengths off them for the first time Frankie Dottori is changing his hands and bullet train with Frankel imperious alongside at the moment a look glance over the shoulder Bahar pulls out and Gabriel they're both trying to mount their challenges but Frankel continues on his imperious way passing the two Bahar being pushed along then bullet train and then Gabriel the moment about to evolve when Frankel the button is pressed and he begins to stretch away Bahar in second place this is the moment this is what makes him such a great racehorse an instant turn of foot on horses that are top class in their own right and made to look pedestrian. Frankel dismisses his rivals with contempt. 12 out of 12, a second Kipco Sussex Stakes, an eighth group one. Frankel beat far by a long way. Gabriel and Bullet Train, the next two home. Alicia Moore goes into a four, five length lead as they approach the halfway stage. Reply gives chase in second. Dawn approach has settled well enough today. He's three lengths further back in third place. There's a two length gap to Gregorium with declaration of war making progress on his outside. Toronado is a two to three lengths further back. The home turn coming up now. The back marker as they come on towards the home straight continues to be trade storm. Latia Moore then in front. Reply in second. 
second place. Just being niggled at a strider two. Dawn approach in third place. Look at declaration of war on the right, the dark blue. Traveling strongly. Gregorian is next. Toronado being held up still. And trade store at the back of the field is Dawn approach now. Coming down inside the final quarter mile to take it up. He goes on by two lengths to declaration of war. Toronado is sent after him now. Dawn approach in blue in front. Toronado the grey jacket coming down the center. The two three-year-olds duel it out as they race inside the last hundred yards. Toronado's coming home strongly. He's grabbed the lead. It's Toronado's day. A cheeky back from Richard Hughes as he wins it to Dawn approach in second. Declaration of war and then trade storm. So Darwin Toronado. Toronado's rider deciding when to press the leader with a bit more vengeance. Not yet it would appear. Third for outstrip and Kingman still held on to at the back of the pack. Darwin had the run of the race out in front during the first half of it. Toronado in second place, poised on the girths of the leader, then outstrip. Kingman is tracking Toronado's every move here as they make their way with two and a half furlongs to go. Darwin, Toronado still travelling powerfully. Kingman is still his shadow. Now the moment, Toronado lower in the saddle, goes past Darwin. Kingman is on the leader's girths, still just trying to keep his powder dry. Toronado quickened up well. Kingman a bit all disorganised when first asked to quicken, then Darwin, Toronado. Kingman taking a long time to get balanced. Now begins to serve. Kingman hurrying at Toronado and Kingman will run him down. He took longer to get organised, but he's won the Sussex Stakes from Toronado. Darwin's right there in third and outstrip in fourth place. So Arrows, his rider, kicks where they are. You'll see the grey ghost of Solo in second place, just ahead of Cougar Mountain in third. The pace is a reasonable one. Fourth then for Knight of Thunder, Bellardo fifth ahead of Bossy Guest. Here comes Wen and Gabriel, Andrea Atzani on the descent for Arrod. Leads by Slover a length, Solo breezing along in second place. Cougar Mountain in third, Knight of Thunder, Bellardo. Here comes Wen, Bossy Guest and Gabriel. Gabriel is still last of all. So now on the descent towards the three. Arrod with Solo looming large towards the outside. Cougar Mountain shoved along. Knight of Thunder towards the center. Bellardo with the white cap. Then here comes Wen, Bossy Guest and Gabriel. Solo yet to really throw it down to Arrod. What's Andrea Atzani kept out in front? Still leads Arrod and is now asked to stretch. Solo covers the move. Knight of Thunder and Cougar Mountain towards the outside. The grey Solo. Arrod is sticking in there on the inside. Solo being forced to knuckle in hard, Arrod tenacious, Solo by a head, Arrod's given just about his all, and Solo on the run to the line is too good. Solo won the cat of Sussex Stakes, but Arrod made him put out all the stops. Type the third, Gabriel came from the back of the field, Cougar Mountain, and here comes Wayne. Galileo Gold leads his pursuit by Ryan on the Gurkha, about a length and a half behind him in second place, and then comes Chris Hayes on Orta, just up into second place now. Ripchester and so beloved behind those as they move to halfway, and then comes Gabriel from Cody Bear. Uh, two or more, three from the back of the field, and then comes Richard Pankhurst, and the back marker is Lightning Spear. In line for home they come then, down to the final three furlongs. Galileo Gold still in front. Ortard with the noseband is up on the outside of the Gurkha, trapping him away against the running rail. Sobel up behind those. Then comes Ribchester as they head down with the two marker in sight. Galileo Gold still in front to Ortard in second place. Sobel up his next. Ribchester a run. The Gurkha still waiting for run. Room on the inside, trying to get it now. Galileo Gold with a furlong to go. The Gurkha gets running room. Ribchester down the centre. The Gurkha in purple comes to try and get Galileo Gold. The the big two fighting it out as they race towards the line. The Gurkha is in front. Ribchester coming out strongly, but it's the Gurkha just. Galileo Gold and Ribchester together. They're a few lengths clear from Tuamoru's home in form. As they race on towards the home straight, they're just past the halfway stage, and it's Ribchester continues to have the advantage. He shows by just over one length to Lancaster Bomber, being joined by Here Comes Wen in second and third places as they move over the grandstand side rails. Coming there is Zelzal, uh, the silver jacket on the right. Frankie grabs the rails position. Lightning Spears behind this, then Toscanini. Two furlongs to go. Ribchester only just in front to Here Comes Wen. Zelzal trying to get through against the running rail. Lightning Spear on the left. Lancaster Bomber behind those. And now Zelzal and Frankie Dottori move through against the running rail to join Ribchester. Here comes Wen in the pink and green. Lightning Spear furthest from us. Now it's Here Comes Wen and Lightning Spear who are going to fight out to finish. Ribchester is trying to rally behind them. Running towards the line now. Here comes Wen and Jim Crowley. Ribchester tried but 
failed by a neck lightning spear behind those and then Zelza. It is a slow pace in the early strides of the Cadar Sussex takes and Andrew Zeni has ended up in front on the favoured unbeaten without parole. The pink cap of Expert Eye in second place. The blue jacket to beat the bank behind those. There's a length and a half to Lightning Spear holding fourth position as they move past halfway. So beloved against the running rail, a similar jacket. Gustav Klimt is up on the outside of him. They begin to quicken. Lord Glitters is one, but Lars Orban is the back marker. Into the straight they come without parole all against the running rail with the nose band of beat the bank on the extreme right is expert eye the pink cap in behind those is Gustav Klimt Orban making progress from the back of the field lightning spear is next heading down towards the last quarter mile now without parole beat the bank and expert eye lightning spear right in behind him so beloved is coming there here's Gustav Klimt it's wide open as they approach the furlong pole now expert eye to Gustav Klimt beat the bank is there lightning spear coming through between those Expert eyes just in front. Lightning Spear throwing out the challenge in the closing stages. Lightning Spear and Asheen Murphy get through and have won. Expert eye in second. Third is very tight. Lord Glitters on the outside of Gustav Clinton. Beat the bank just in behind those.